This was caused by my bad hydraulic clutch cylinders, which we will replace in this video. So atypically for this car, this problem was actually caused by me. I had accidentally left the clutch master cylinder empty when I was doing some other work on the car. And so as I was driving it and using the car, using the clutch, the cylinders just ran out of fluid. Luckily I was able to top off the fluid on the road and then pump the clutch a few times which got enough pressure and fluid into the system so that I could drive home. So these are the new parts. We've got the new master and slave cylinders, some new brake hose uh, to get brake fluid from the reservoir to the master cylinder and the new brake fluid. So this is some BBR brand. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, this is the master cylinder. This must be the slave cylinder, Bill Stein. Um, what up here it says EAC, Ferdinand Bill Stein. Alright. Okay, it's just the slave cylinder with the leader cap and some kind of shipping cap which has come off already hmm seems a bit soft and squishy so this is the old slave cylinder under the car attached to the gearbox use a 7mm spanner and crack open the bleed nipple just let it drain until it stops we will remove the slave cylinder together with the soft hose which goes all the way up here and there's some connection point with a hard line. So here's the slave cylinder removed from the car and these are all the tools you need. So you've got the 7mm wrench for the bleed nipple and to remove the hose from the hard line you need a, a flare nut wrench, 11 millimeters for the hard line side and 14 millimeters for the hose and this part here. And so that gets the hose off, but to get the slave cylinder off, there are two nuts that hold it to the bell housing. So one nut here and one nut on the other side. And then there's two bolts that come out of the bell housing. So you need a 13 millimeter socket. This is a three quarters inch, sorry, a three eighths inch drive. And that's about the largest you can go because there's not a lot of room here. So this gets you here. And you can see there's not a whole lot of clearance around the socket. So with the lower one, you can just get the socket and a wrench. But for the upper one, you need some sort of extension like that. Let's you get in there, and you can see you can't use a thicker extension. And this is about as long, or well, this is pretty much the length you need. Um, you can't go much longer because there's stuff here. I think the transmission is in the way here. So here I'm undoing the hose and hardline connection with the 11mm flare nut wrench and the 14mm spanner. And here the hose has been detached and it's just dangling from the slave cylinder. Next, we have to remove these two nuts. I don't have any good footage of this, but basically the bottom nut is simple, straightforward. But for the top nut, you have to get your extensions and extend the socket to the length I showed earlier. 
Once both nuts are removed, the slave cylinder will come off easily. The slave cylinder actually hides this hole in the bell housing, through which the actuator will engage the clutch. So the slave cylinder is out and we move on to the master cylinder. And these are the tools I needed. We've got 10mm socket that gets these two bolts out that hold the master cylinder in place. We've got a flathead screwdriver that uh, detaches the hose from the reservoir. And lastly, we've got a 13mm and 17mm wrench that undoes the connection between the master cylinder and the clutch paddle. You also need the flare nut wrench from before. So under the clutch fluid reservoir is a little hose that actually goes through the firewall and into the clutch master cylinder. And if you go down the firewall, you'll see the end of the master cylinder with a hard line attached. 11mm again. Undo this hard line. And now we remove the hose from the clutch fluid reservoir. In the driver's foot well, these two bolts hold the master cylinder in place. It may be more convenient to hold down the accelerator pedal to get it out of the way so you can undo these bolts. And now we can undo the very end of the master cylinder which connects it to the clutch pedal. Now we can remove the master cylinder from within the driver's foot well. It's a good idea to lay some cloth on the floor at this point so that if there's any clutch fluid, brake fluid that leaks out, it won't absorb into the carpet. Okay, up comes the master cylinder, I hope. Pull the rubber hose through and pull it out through the firewall. Alright, there you have it. So what was wrong with my old parts? Well, on the slave cylinder, you can see that the rubber boot has torn. And so I think the brake fluid was actually leaking out through this seal causing there to be complete loss of pressure and lack of brake fluid on the master cylinder. And in the master cylinder, the boot up here was also torn. So every time I pressed on the clutch pedal, brake fluid will come out. And that's about it I guess. It's a hydraulic system and you're losing hydraulic fluid so everything fails. I've got a pretty gnarly looking boot seal for the firewall. I 
I'm also going to reuse this 45 degree plastic connector thing Eleven meter, eleven millimeters flare nut wrench, same as the rest. The new parts will need to have the old bits transferred onto them before we can use them. Here I'm just making sure all the diameters are the same as the old hose. Now I'm just going to plug the connector into the new hose. Just make sure you push it all the way in so it doesn't come off when you are driving. Next I'll cut the new hose to the same length as the old hose to maintain the same fit. Now I'll grab the master cylinder and we can insert the connector into the master cylinder. The last piece to install on the master cylinder is the rubber grommet for the firewall. Moving on to the slave cylinder. The only part to install onto the slave cylinder is the hose leading to the hard line. So just clean off the old hose and you can insert and screw it in. You can leave it slightly loose so that you can adjust the angle when you're installing the slave cylinder into the car. Or if like me, you have forgotten what angle it goes in. And that's it. The last step is just to install the parts into the car and don't forget to fill up the clutch fluid, in this case it's the brake fluid and pump the clutch until you get full pressure in the system uh, meaning you don't have much slack in the clutch pedal. If the video helped you, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks!